Iran has once again pledged to avenge the assassination of the country's top nuclear scientist, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, who was killed in a terror attack in November. Chief of Staff of Iran's Armed Forces, Mohammad Baghdadi, said Iran will retaliate at the proper time and place. He underlined that the U.S. and Israeli regimes were plotting to assassinate Fakhrizadeh for two decades. Baghdadi made the comments during a ceremony marking the 40th day of the martyrdom of Fakhrizadeh. He hailed the... Uh, character, knowledge, and dedication of these slain scientists. The general noted that the country's youth would continue his legacy in the path of progress. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh was killed in a terrorist attack near Tehran. He was uh, deputy defense minister and of the head of the ministry's organization for defensive innovation and research. Senior editor at UWI Analytical Center, Alexander Azadagan, joins us now from Irvine, California. Mr. Azadagan, welcome to the program. Uh, please uh, give us uh, your perspective on the recent comments made uh, by uh, Iran's chief of staff of the armed forces with regards to the assassination uh, of uh, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, uh, in his words, by the Israelis. It's good to be with you, Bardi, and our global audience. Uh, uh, I've I watched uh, the, the speech in Persian, and uh, uh, I, I found it uh, profoundly uh, inclusive of some of the options that Tehran may take. Uh, the worst thing that Iran could do is do nothing. Uh, I think the enemies of Iran are banking on that because they feel they have cornered Iran into such a vicious uh, place that uh, if Iran reacts, it's going to be punished. If it doesn't react, it's going to make itself prone to to future uh, attacks like this. I think uh, uh, at the heart of this is to bring Iran back into what they call the negotiation table. I think policymakers in Brussels, and it's not just in Washington, in Brussels as well, they need to realize there will be no negotiations needed to restore the Iranian nuclear deal. Uh, Washington, under whatever president, can't just come in and go into international treaties and expect the world to hold its breath. Negotiations were over in July of 2015. Iran should not negotiate over the same real estate twice, as your foreign minister has been saying repeatedly since 2018. And besides, negotiations were over Iran's nuclear issue, not over Iran's foreign policy in the region. or outside the, uh, the, the region or Iran's deterrent missile program or any other issue other than the nuclear issues. This was explicitly stated. Uh, Washington cannot just continuously move the goalpost and that in and out of itself is a form of violation and reneging. So it's the, the assassination of Professor Fakhrizadeh, the assassination of General Soleimani, which by the way, if we talk, it, if we mention General Soleimani in our social medias, they block us for 30 days. I just got blocked on Facebook and Instagram for that. This is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they cannot just go unanswered. I think Iran has to be very even-handed. Let me know anytime uh, if you want to interrupt with a follow-up question. No, no, it's uh, okay. Please and, continue. Okay. Yeah, it has to go through legal channels. I think uh, your judiciary system just a few days ago uh trying to push for an arrest of donald trump was extremely when it comes to the symbolic perspective when it comes to the pr perspective in my opinion is very successful uh, trying going after this man even though he may not necessarily go anywhere uh, uh, uh as far as uh, some european dignitaries even at the un level uh, which made some very interesting statements about how illegal it was the killing of general soleimani was completely extrajudicial. And also, uh, you tie that with uh, Professor Fakhrizadeh, uh, if you actually manage to gather enough global momentum through the legal channels, yes, it doesn't hold as much luster as it would do in the battlefield, which again, is an option for the Iranians, as it should be. This was the assassination of a military figure. And, and certainly, uh, uh, retaliating in a, such a limited way of, 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 of uh, you know, missile attacks against Ain al-Assad base in al Anbar province. Uh, that, in my opinion, that's not enough. Uh, w if that was enough, you did you wouldn't be having B-52s probably equipped with nuclear war, you know, uh, missiles. We don't know if that nuclear bombs on it or not. They wouldn't be uh, parading over the Iranian 
uh, uh, airspace in the Persian Gulf, and they would, you know, they just passed this. Uh, 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 they came up with the decision not to pull U.S.S. Nimitz out of the out of the Persian Gulf ba based on some ridiculous uh, audio recording that Iran is going to attack the, the Capitol building. They, you know, our Congress. I mean, this is ridiculous. They want Iran to uh, fully attack uh, in a military way. I think Iran's measures should be even-handed. It should go through legal channels. Like I said, it doesn't hold as much luster, but they're actually petrified of that, even though international law doesn't hasn't exactly existed under Donald Trump. They want to move into a rule-based system, and guess who sets the rules? Washington does. So uh, uh, with Biden and the new liberals coming back to power, they, these people seem to have more respect for global institutions, for international law, and that's exactly where Iran should head, where it heads them, from an international law perspective. But uh, uh, there were some talks about uh, revenging Professor Fakhrizadeh by getting a Mossad high uh, command individual. That certainly would be an option. Uh, Iran increasing its presence in Syria, which, by the way, is really... Air Force has been bombarding with their F-16, you know, especially the T-4 base, the Syrian T-4 base. I mean, almost without any restraint in the past several months. Uh, this, from what I know about your culture and the Iranian foreign policy, is that they will let their enemies get as close to them as possible, and then they will hit. And when when they hit, it will hurt. We certainly hope our counterparts in Tehran, the reformist counterparts, would maintain that policy. Because it's a national, uh, it's a national interest issue. It's not just internal Iranian political okay. issue, and and we hope they stay true to that. All right. Thanks a lot, Alexander Ozadegan, joining us from Irvine, California.